I'm Stefan Bauman. Thank you once again for tuning in to another podcast. Today I discussed with one of my students how to get inspired, how to inspire others, and how to touch, move, and inspire millions of people to create a new opportunity, a new possibility for the world. In this conversation, you will get some insights and some ideas about what you could do with your own art so that you could take your art to the next level. So sit back and relax and enjoy this conversation on how to touch, move, and inspire millions of people. The wind is the worst. I hate the wind. The wind, I mean, I, I was at um, Mount Whitney and I said, oh, because I have this one easel that is just huge. It's like for outdoor painting. It's, um, it's, it's the same easel that Sargent and these guys use. And it's a big, huge tripod with a, with a cantilevered leg and stuff so that you can paint outside. You know, it's portable. Yeah. But it can take 40 by 60 canvases. It's, it's insane. And so I'm out there at Mount Whitney um, because I was trying to get Mount Whitney to be a national park. And so I spent a lot of time down there doing paintings there and I'd have my van where I slept in. So I was down at the Alabama Hills, which is basically the place where John Wayne did all of his movies and all of the Westerns with those big rocks and stuff. They're all shot there in Long Pine. I'm I'm camped out there. and, And the reason why I wanted to turn that area into a national park is because the whole place is just devastated with people and dune bikes and stuff like this. And so I thought there was enough significance there. And I did a lot of research on what it takes to be, a, you know, to be a national park. And you had to have environmental issues, too. And so, you know, there's a tortoise down there that's getting run over a lot. So that was part of part of me, you know, campaigning. The water rights for L.A. all flow off of the Mount Whitney and and that part of the Eastern Sierras. And so the park that we were trying to establish was quite a ways up. I forgot what it was, but it was like almost the whole Eastern Sierras, almost from Tuolumne down. You know, the, uh, definitely the opposite side of Sequoia and Kings Canyon. So, you know, here, here it butts up against two major national parks that are right next to each other. And I came up with the idea as like, let's just incorporate this whole area. Um, And surprisingly, I got a lot of support for it. I had gone with the national parks for a while. So, so, but the thing is, this is the great thing about being a painter is that you get a chance to really make a difference, you know, like being a calling. And I was in a program at the time where uh, it was about leadership. A lot of my classes are based on what I've learned about that, about being in servitude for others and do things. And so I enrolled lots of people into this program. I even enrolled Ensel Adams' son into it. He lives over by Mona Lake. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but at the time he was on board. And so I also had Robert Bateman on board. You know, so so I don't know if you're are you familiar with Robert Bateman, the wildlife artist. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so my favorites. yeah, so so it, it was really great because he normally doesn't answer the phone, and so with, for this project, and he had already committed that he was going to do a painting. So the whole idea was this. So this is this is marketing one hundred and one, right? So I said, oh. how can I enroll a lot of people into doing something? It requires a lot of a lot of ideas, a lot of things, you, you know, whenever you're going to do something, you don't do it small. And in my program, it was like, find something that's impossible and see if you can create it and you'll be surprised. And the, and the program itself would actually help support it, you know, so they would allow all of their, their marketing resources, their mailing lists and all this stuff to do it. And uh, out of this program, uh, AIDS walk uh, erupted and breast cancer you know, they're just small people coming up with amazing things, but you have to stay in the background. It's not about, oh, this is going to be Bauman's National Park. It's literally something that you 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 put together and you do it because you're passionate about it and you have a beginning and an end. Right before it created, the last minute of that, you, you in the process of enrolling people around you, you kind of find out people who you by who you are, the leadership that you are, 
you try to inspire others to be enrolled also. And right before it really kind of explodes, you hand it off to somebody else. You say, okay, so you've been with me this far and da, 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 I'm still part of the project, but I want you to be the name up front. You know, you don't do it for yourself. You do it for others. So my, my idea was this, because I wanted to be art related. So what I determined that I was going to do the same thing as we did with Yellowstone. And the way that Yellowstone got started was it was a contingency of uh, uh, some uh, explorers and Thomas Moran and Henry Jackson. Those two, those two men went to Yellowstone with, um, with Haydn and the expedition to Yellowstone. Moran did this huge, gigantic painting of Yellowstone because it didn't have color photographs. And they actually wheeled this big painting into Congress and said, look at these, this place. You know, this place is deserving of, of having protection. And uh, lo and behold, you know, by, by uh, bringing awareness through art, basically, Congress established Yellowstone National Park. So I said, you know, the, the Eastern Sierras are just gorgeous. Absolutely. They, you know, and they could, because they're right north of L.A., and L.A. uses that area for water, but, you know, you have mammoth there, and almost everybody who goes to mammoth comes up from L.A. You don't get people from San Francisco or, or the West Coast because they have to go over the Sierras. Now, it's a long trek to go over there, but it is one of the closest major ski areas from Los Angeles that people come up to. Uh, up 395 and so I said it's not really well uh, publicized or you know you don't see that and yet you look at these magnificent Sierra mountains you know the magnificent lakes that are up there magnificent um, things and most people don't know what it's like so what I was going to do was going to have a national competition I still should do this I really should maybe I can do it now because I have such a huge following on YouTube um, that it probably could get legs pretty quickly so that, you know, it can happen. But, um, I would, I would enroll into an artistic competition, um, artists. And what we would do is we would have a, a yearly competition for, let's say five years. And what we would be doing is pulling together an art collection that uh, the winners of this competition over years would participate in. And this art collection would eventually travel the nation and eventually travel to the doors of Congress. And using artwork, we would campaign to create the eastern side of the Sierras into a national park. And it would go from Sequoia down to uh, 395. It would be that area. And I think that the areas would actually go across uh, 395. And you know how it's like the watershed in there. And because it is a watershed, um, protect that area from, from building or anything like that. And yeah, as a national park, have you, you've been down to the Alabama Hills, haven't you? I, I mean, it is, it is really awesome. I mean, those, those, it's in, huh? Speaking of movies, it's in all the movies. And like if you're watching Iron Man, you know, with, with what's, it's, there's clips in Gladiator of the Eastern Sea. Yeah. And commercials, all the world's Fargo commercials, they're all filmed there and yeah, stuff. Yeah, car commercials, mm -hmm. it's all there. Yeah, yeah it's great. And, and, you know, even... The long, long, long trailer with uh, Lucy and Ricky, the movie that they did where they were newlyweds. Have you ever seen that movie? No. Oh, my God. You have to see. It's hilarious. It's uh, Ricky and Lucy, but they're not playing their roles as, uh, uh, you know, as, as a Cuban band leader. They're playing husband and wife and they just get married and they get this huge, long trailer. You know, it, because that was really popular back then. So they have this ginormous long trailer and they take it uh, across on a national tour. 
And everywhere she goes, she wants to, because she's all sentimental, right? And of course, the movie is they get married, they go on their honeymoon in this trailer. And of course, when they get back, they divorce. You know? <laughs> and so the, 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 whole, the whole process is trailering um, and, and how unromantic it is, you know? And uh, so at one point she's collecting, because she's so sentimental, she says, oh, we're going to have you know, our house and I want to have rocks from all the different national parks lining our walkway. And uh, so everywhere she goes, and he's, he's you know, saying how stupid that is because you know, rocks are too heavy and stuff, but she doesn't listen to him. So she's hiding these big boulders, these big rocks, the size of like bread boxes. Um, in the trailer and of course the trailer is getting heavier and heavier and uh, at one point she decides that she's going to bake a cake while he's driving and he's in that convertible pulling the trailer and singing and she's trying to bake bread and while he <laughs> she he's uh, hitting bumps and stuff these boulders start to come out of the cabinets and stuff and uh, she's back there screaming. Of course, he can't hear her, you know. So, but the whole thing is the whole thing is just really funny. You'll have to you'll have to go rent it because uh, uh, they take you know that that um, road that goes up. Uh, is it the Onion Pass that goes up to um, the Sierras there? Onion Valley. Onion Valley, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a road that goes up to that's the beginning, the trailhead for Mount Whitney. And uh, they go up on that windy, twisty thing with this trailer that can't make the corners. I mean, it's just, it is just hilarious how they, how they, this things get pushed around. Um, so, so uh, yeah, it's a real famous area, and I, I think it would be a really great project. But the thing is, if you're going, yeah, you know, if you, you've got to be inspired. I mean, I've worked on this for a couple of years. I mean, I would. I'd call these important people. I had lots of celebrities in the Bay Area that were in on it. Um, there's a program that used to be Bay Area Back Roads, and, and the, um, the, the host of that was in on it. Um, they get their celebrity people. I mean, Robert Bateman was in on it. He was going to do a painting of a, a, an endangered bighorn sheep. You can do amazing things as being an artist. Yeah you got to be inspired. And the, the issue is, is that you, in order to be inspired, you got to inspire people because you lose or wane your inspiration. We talked about this yesterday. You know, it's like your wife goes, well, why are you paying Stefan if you're not painting? You know? And, and the issue with that is that is she enrolled in what you want to do? Is she behind what you want to do? Or is she just like giving you permission to be whatever you want? So, you know, and you could kind of take it that way because if you enrolled people around you, they step back. One thing that I found when I was doing the Power to Create class is that I'd have 17 people participating and I would go, okay, so next week we're going to do five paintings, five 16 by 20 paintings of the same thing plus 100, 100 drawings. And they would go, oh, wow, I can't do that. And after a couple of weeks, you know, we sit in an empty room and we have a three hour, the, the whole Power to Create class actually was a lecture class. It was, nobody painted during it. It was a three hour lecture listening to me. Can you believe that? And so, and so we'd, we'd sit around with me gabbing on about things and no artwork to look at. And it goes, you know, imagine what would happen. See, this is part of the enrollment. You know, like imagine what would happen if everybody did their homework. What would this class be like? I mean, not only would you hear the lesson that I have to teach, but you get to see all the different ideas people have doing the same thing. So we would do like eggs, you know? So you had to do five, five paintings of the same theme of eggs, okay? So the first three are easy, or the first two are easy, but the last three, you got to think about it. The rumor is the Power to Create class. It's like, how am I going to make that theme better, right? So then, then we have, so you did five paintings. The idea was you do five paintings times 17. So now you're sitting through an entire three hour class looking at a shitload of artwork on the same thing. And not only do you stop at where you know what you know, you know, that, that's all you know, right? But you get to see all these other people pushing what they know. And you sit there and you go, wow, I didn't think of that. 
And so all of a sudden it becomes really curious because a couple of artists start doing it and you start seeing the reason why they they signed up for this class. You know, because it, you, you go to your max, your, somebody else goes to their max and you start seeing their ideas and their concepts. It almost makes you want to run back in and do another five because you realize how shallow your ideas were. You know? Yeah. And so this is something I learned in college because at the beginning of the year, the teacher said, okay, at the end of the year, you're going to present a portfolio. And in that portfolio, I expect to see a self-portrait. So my freshman year of college, never being around artists and and uh, you know creative people, I shouldn't say that because I was at Stanford for two years, but that just sucked. Um, and their art department was laughable. So I just got out of there and then went to the Academy of Art. And it was in the transition period where, where they're starting to get the fundamentals of teaching, but the teachers sucked. But um, this one teacher, Casey Fitzsimmons, she was amazing. She wrote a book on serious drawing. Um, God, I loved her class. If it wasn't for her class, I don't think I would be as far as I was. And, you know, she said, OK, everybody, at the end of the year, uh, everybody has to submit a self-portrait. So I'm sitting there kind of stupid and naive and not really good student at the time. And so I go home and just kind of draw myself in the mirror and, you know, shove it into my portfolio and all that. And then we had the critique afterwards. And I just look like a fool because everybody had these artistic uh, ideas and shading, all this stuff. And here I'm coming in with a little stupid line drawing like a four-year-old. And uh, I realized, wow, I'm not stepping up to the plate. And this is, the, this is what happens in the room because you see a few people popping they start doing the work and they're inspired and then those people inspire other people much like my my idea for mount whitney being a national park um it was supposed to be something that artists all got behind and you know we would publish a book that's what it was is that we would eventually publish a book of all of these great paintings and and uh, of the eastern sierras and then everybody in Congress would get a copy of this book and we would campaign that we this is an important area. And so the whole idea was we would have a big uh, area for the national parks. And part of the history of the national parks is that, yeah, a series of 300 artists all got together to, to campaign for this national park center. Yeah, so all these paintings would be on display at the visitor center. Um, so, you know, you can imagine how all these visitor centers always have an area where the history of the park is and all of these original paintings would be on permanent display, you know, so it would be like this big artist thing, you know, and I would have stepped out of it, you know, tw towards the end of it and let the people who really campaigned with me to do this, that were inspired to do all the legwork and stuff, because I don't have time to do it all myself, but that's why you enroll people if you're doing outstanding things that's how but the, that's how you bring awareness i mean what you do is is the only way you can save things that's the whole reason why why yosemite they should shut yosemite down but they don't because it's a cash cow and people don't want to support something they can't walk in or drive in right and so they have to keep these parks open so that people can get to them and get out of them and uh, so bringing awareness actually helps preserve things. Um, and so that was the impetus, of, you know, John Muir said everybody should be able to enjoy this. Yeah. But, you but can imagine how many people would actually go up there. But the thing is, though, you know, you're inspired to do it. And so that's going to be your homework this week is to create a painting, you know, that that um, idolizes this, even if it gets destroyed or dies in our because we're going through global warming. We have no idea what's going to happen with this tree. But see, yeah, this is how sure. this is how you you create. You get inspired because you go, you know, I have to do this now. I have yeah. to do this. And what you do is you enroll people that are around you, like your wife and your boss and stuff, and you tell them this is what I'm up to. And now there's an expectation, yeah. You know? And but then all of a sudden, that's the, hmm. You know, do, do you tell them that's the tree, or do you say it's a bristle? No, no, no. You tell them it's a. You, you, you tell them the tree, the story. That's part of it. You're going to make this tree public. You don't have to tell them where it is, but right. how inspirational is it to, to paint something that is the oldest of anything? 
and and you get to educate but you get to educate people too see and so you, you'll see that when the um and this is what i want to get back to is that when you inspire and roll others people will step back and give you a clearing so people in this class my power to create class everybody towards the end was doing five paintings a week and 100 drawings um because the classroom itself inspired everybody else and then yeah. and then they were so committed to this class that their families and and people around them would give them a clearing and say you know you should be doing your homework stefan's expecting it because of just how how much of a priority painting became at that point yeah you know and so it's the same thing with you you know all of a sudden i hear a little note of inspiration and it's like man do it and we should talk maybe maybe you know, we should resurrect the national parks of Mount Whitney, you know, Mount Whitney being a national park. Yeah. We could resurrect. No, we that's could, a great idea. Yeah. But I see, I just enrolled. Pressure. Yeah. But see, I enrolled you in that just now. And I think I think it I think it would be good, you know, and I still think Robert Bateman's still alive. I don't think he would back out on that, but we'd have to be rolling along a lot more. Yeah. So anyway. Oh yeah, he's huge, but there's a lot of artists right now that would jump on that bandwagon. If you ever get down here though, I will show you Methuselah tree. It's, it's magical to be one of the few people on the planet that actually knows the tree. Well, why don't you the old pictures? Why don't you have me? Why don't you inspire me through the, through your painting this week? Yeah, I should. Um, man, that's going to be it's going to be a challenging painting too though. You want to do a service, you know. You, it's it's a special thing. You won't fuck it up. Well, you know? let's let's take it. Let's take a look at it next week. All right, sounds good. Now you so, now now it's your job. Now it's your job to inspire me. Yeah, yeah. Boy, man, why couldn't you make it tough? <laughs> so. But that but that the thing is that's how great art and great things are created. Yeah, I think being an artist is like one of the most special things ever. It is. It is the most special thing. And aren't we lucky to be able to do that? Yeah, I just wish I was better at it. So. Well, you know why you're not better at it? Yeah. Because you don't, you don't, you're not quite inspired by it. Yeah. It's I not that you don't it. know. It's not that you don't know, you're kind of lost because you don't have inspiration, you don't have a goal, you don't have a focus. Yeah, that's true. But now you uh, do. And time. Yeah. Well, time, time is awesome. Time is one of those things that, you know, you you if you're up to something, the world opens up opportunity. The yeah. world opens up opportunity. And I didn't have time to create a national park and create a movement and that and enroll all these people at the time because I was teaching and living in the Bay Area trying to survive, you know. But somehow, it, if, if, if you're inspired, the world will open up a path. And a lot of people are afraid to take that path. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are afraid to to uh, ask themselves, but what if? Yeah. Because they're afraid of whatever commitment it is. But if anybody who is up to anything asked themselves that same question, we wouldn't have anything. Steve Jobs, you know, let's transform the world, transform the world through, through an idea. That's all he had was an idea. He, he enrolled talented people to create his ideas. And the world got the smartphone and everything else that, you know, came out of that, you know. But he never once opened up a computer with a screwdriver and tried to figure out how it worked. All it takes is, is a vision. And if you come forth with that vision and you roll other people into allowing you to, to follow that dream, you might find out that there is an opening out there. And it might change everything about what you're doing day to day and uh, and don't keep don't keep the extraordinary um hidden you know one way one way to create any possibility in your life is to enroll others you know and, and we're talking like your wife kids your friends your family your boss you all this 
you enroll others to what you're up to because they make you accountable. You enroll me. You know, next week, next week, our phone call is going to have a totally different intention. Think about it. I'm going to go, so where's that? And you're going to feel like, you know, this, this I will make time for. This I will get up an hour earlier. This, this I will uh, make such an idea, such a passion that when I get home and I'm exhausted and everybody's put to bed, I will stay up another hour and work on it. Through that, if you inspire somebody, somebody might say, you know what, let's, let's campaign to move the trail. So part of your campaign is to bring awareness to it. And you could say, you know, this, 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 species, this tree, um, by the mere act of, of the Forest Service putting in a, a trail uh, to a location is in jeopardy. And we'd like to campaign to have the Forest Service reroute the trail to protect the tree. And see, you, you could be part of something like that. That is so minor. But I think you would have a lot of people if you if you created a painting that was um, special enough and you had a story that was captivating. I think through just social media and a very uh, minute effort, you could probably cause something like that to happen. How awesome is that? And if you cause that, if you cause that, you know, Long Pine does have a visitor center. And uh, you might donate the painting to their visitor center. The Forest Service or the Bureau of Land Management, wherever the, the you know, wherever this tree is, if there's enough movement and some, some money generated through print sales, what you do is set up a fund me. You know, people would just donate into that. If you give them a, if you give them a work and inspiration, you probably could get enough people through a fund me account, which is, you know, you have these tools now. I mean, that's why I said when I was doing the national parks, there was very little social media. I mean, we had AOL at the time. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, what do you want to get into a chat room? But nowadays we have all of these other things. And so I think we should regenerate the national park idea of Mount Whitney. So the first step is to create the painting, right? That's you have to create a phenomenal painting. See, I want to do the same thing up here uh, with uh, Mount Shasta. And uh, Mount Shasta one time had uh, bighorn sheep. Half of the sheep back at the turn of the century, this is back when John Muir was hiking around, um, half of the sheep were killed by uh, brucellosis because a lot of the Spanish people came up here, the uh, Basque came up here with their sheep and killed half of the herd. Uh, with that, and the second half of the herd was killed by a avalanche. And so I thought, wow, if I did a really awesome painting, um, maybe I could enroll people in this area to bring back the bighorn sheep onto Mount Shasta. I mean, what an awesome thing that would be. Yes. So our work can be really a powerful, a powerful messenger. If you think about it, I mean, for God's sakes, Yellowstone was created by the artwork of Thomas Moran. So all of a sudden painting, so painting isn't an insignificant thing anymore. It can generate possibility. And when you think about that, it's endless. But the thing is even telling you this story, I'm really inspired about maybe campaigning for something like that. Now I'm a busy guy. You know how busy I am, you know? But yeah. somehow if I enroll people around me, if I inspire them to, to uh, come together as a group, start up a, a Facebook group and start putting up, I mean, I even had a website for, uh, it was mountwhitneynationalpark.com mm -hmm. um, where I was putting together the message. Um, you know, I think I'm going to look into that again. Thanks for inspiring me. And so the whole thing is now you're not just sitting at work going, feeling bad about yourself for not doing artwork going, I hate my life. Um, now you're going to be sitting there going, how can I create a painting that will inspire millions of people? Yeah. And it's not, it's doable. It's a small thing. All you need to do is create an eighth of a mile trail that diverts around this tree to protect it. And I think through a GoFundMe account and a beautiful work of art, I think 
you probably could do it very easily. Things talk about visibility. You know, so don't do a little painting. Do something that shows up on the wall there. We're talking about you're 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 creating this for your son's grandchildren. This is this is why you have a coach. Now, since you're inspired, what are you going to do with it? I'll talk to you next week. So there you have it. If you want to create change, if you want to get your artwork to be better, then you've got to be inspired. And to be inspired, you've got to enroll other people into what you are up to. If you'd like to get further information about inspiration, about my YouTube channel, about my PBS show, and also to register for a free book, Everything I Know About Painting, go to www.stephanbauman.com or just give me a call at 415-606-9074 if you're interested in any information about coaching. The information on coaching is also available on my website. So until the next podcast, remember, paint with passion.